I imagine it's satisfactory to see how well you predicted things. At the same time, you predicted awful things. How do you guys feel about the current response 10 years after, nine years after, to your predictions and to the accuracy of them? So I've been in this field really since 1981 when HIV first emerged and it was clear within a few years that it had originated in nature. Then we had Nipah virus, which is the model for this, which went from bats to pigs. And in fact, at the time that we were talking about what the, the hero or villain of the piece might be, how we want to refer to this virus, there had been for the very first time chain of human to human transmission of Nipah virus. So Nipah virus and Hendra virus went from bats to people. In Malaysia, they went from bats to people, through pigs. And in Bangladesh, they went from bats to people through something called palm sap, which is collected the way you collect maple syrup. And the bats would pee into these pots and people would become infected that way. But there had been a chain of transmission, so it seemed like a good way to go. And because it has a very unstable genome, it has the ability to incorporate other segments. So if an animal simultaneously infected with one virus that has certain properties and another that has different properties, the two can be combined to create something entirely new. And in this instance, with COVID, uh, there has been a lot of finger pointing suggesting that somebody had deliberately engineered a virus in the Institute of Virology in Wuhan. It had been released, and this was the responsible for the scourge. And the paper that you alluded to at the beginning, where we looked at the genetic sequence of the virus and said, concluded that it had not been created in a laboratory, but that it had emerged, just as Scott said, in nature. And these things are continually emerging. 70% of the emerging infectious diseases we know about originate in wildlife. HIV, West Nile virus, MERS, SARS, this new one, SARS-CoV-2, there's a whole range of them. And we're not done yet. Every day is a result of changes in our ecosystem and the increasing intersections between communities and animals and bushmeat and exotic pets and everything else, we're at risk for more. And I don't think that this is the last one. It may not even be the worst that we encounter in our lifetimes. So our plan had been, we're gonna show this movie, people are gonna wake up, we're gonna have better surveillance, we're never gonna get there, we're not gonna have this event. And here we are, almost 10 years after we first conceived of this idea, and we have COVID-19.